Welcome to the Mobile User Acquisition Show and welcome to the second episode of our Mobile Growth Crystal Ball series to round out the year 2021. We are thrilled to share with you forecasts and predictions for the year 2022 from some of the smartest folks in the mobile growth space. In today's episode, we are excited to welcome Melissa Zalouf, VP Marketing at IronSource, Nadalia Drost, Marketing Manager at Fabulous, and Jerome Turnbull, VP of Growth at AppLovin. Melissa talks about the return of creative processes to internal teams and how this impacts performance marketing. Natalia shares her insights on moving away from traditional UA sources and the possibility of other platforms to open up over the coming year. Jerome gives us an idea of how apps are looking to optimize their paywalls over the next year. Well, let's jump right in. To get started, Melissa Zalouf is the VP of Marketing at IronSource, one of the leading business platforms for the app economy. Melissa is also the host of the Level Up podcast, which focuses on the design, development, and business of mobile games. Today, Melissa takes us through the evolution of creative processes. Oftentimes, creatives have been outsourced in order for game teams to focus on core products. However, as it becomes increasingly clear that creators are the foundation of UA, there is a movement to bring creative production in-house. Let's listen to what Melissa says. Hi, my name is Melissa Zalouf and I'm the VP Marketing at IronSource, a leading business platform for app developers to turn their apps into scalable businesses. I think we can all agree that user acquisition has only become more complex and competitive over the last year or so. And within that context, and we've said this a lot at IronSource, creatives become ever more important. The more automated UA becomes, the more creatives become one of the key ways to get an edge with a campaign, especially interactive creatives. But then one of the central issues we've seen come up is scale. How do you create the right team with the right tech to be able to produce a huge amount of creatives and iterate on them at a fast pace? For many mobile game companies, this comes down to hiring an in-house creative team or outsourcing production. Now, every game company has different needs, and our experience at IronSource working with companies of all sizes has shown us that in-house production has some unique benefits, while sometimes outsourcing can give you additional support, perspectives, uh, and ideas. But as UA managers are building their strategy for 2022, we think we're going to see more companies bring creative production further in-house, and here's why. First of all, producing creatives in-house gives you end-to-end -end control over the entire creative process, from ideation to optimization. Having your own creative team means having a group of professionals in your organization that are dedicated to managing the priorities of your game studio. And they can work closely with your other teams to help improve creative performance and your operation as a whole. Since your game success is directly aligned with their own, an in-house team is always more motivated to crack the creative code. An in-house creative team can also build an internal knowledge base of best practices that can translate into a big competitive advantage in the market and boost your speed of production. The second big advantage of bringing creative production in-house is all about transparency. An in-house creative team that's able to access all of the game's data creates a more seamless feedback loop. Just make sure you're sharing all of your metrics internally. So what does this look like in practice? Let's say there's a level that's performing really well in your game. Seeing these in-game metrics, your game designers let the creative team know this level is a fan favorite, and then your creative team highlights the level in their next set of ads. This whole process happens more quickly and efficiently than communicating with an external team. Also, you might not want to share a lot of sensitive in-game data with outside organizations. With an in-house creative team, you can keep your secret source, which is basically your creative formula for success, to yourself. The third key advantage of designing creatives in-house is reducing your time to market. When all of your teams are internal, factors that affect the speed of creative production are always shorter. That's because bringing your creative team in-house improves internal communication and creates that well-oiled feedback loop we mentioned just now. There's a reason most hyper-casual studios have in-house creative teams. Speed is especially important for that genre as the top charts change quickly and competition is high. In the past, we've actually found that there was a huge gap from when the creator was ready to go live to when it actually did go live. In one extreme example, a playable ad we created was waiting in someone's Dropbox for 10 days. It later proved to boost performance 5x, which meant that that delay translated into a loss of hundreds of thousands of potential new users. 
But after we brought creative production in-house, we were able to automate the whole process and test playables in a much more controlled and precise way that reduced time to market. The fourth and final advantage is perhaps a surprising one. In the long run, investing in an in-house creative team ends up being more cost effective. You're not paying an agency premium anymore. And while, of course, the cost of failing or struggling to deliver value is always there with hiring your own creative team, if you go about it the right way, the savings can help you scale a creative department that lets you enjoy all of the in-house benefits. It definitely looks like there are strong advantages to bringing production in-house. It's something for a lot of us creative-minded folks to think about. Our next guest is Natalia Drost. Natalia Drost is the marketing manager at Fabulous, a health platform based in Paris. She's an app marketing expert and her specialization lies in app store optimization and growing apps through paid and organic marketing. In this section, Natalia takes over to tell us about how web to app flows are set to grow in the coming year. She also tells us about the possibility of new channels for UA that will open up and how the numbers certainly don't favor Facebook as a UA source and why this trend may be set to increase over the coming year. Natalia, over to you. Hello, Mobile News Acquisition Show, Natalia Drost here. Happy to be again with you and share some of my size and predictions for 2022. A couple of words. I love working with apps. I love working with apps in health and fitness niche, and that's why I will build my suggestions or ideas based on what I'm working with on a daily basis. I basically have two predictions and one small note. One small note, I hate predictions because no one can be 100% sure about the future. Our certainty is our uncertainty. So that's why I don't take it really seriously. I'll just try to share some of my observations. I have two. One, I believe that more apps will try to use web to app in different ways because there is still no clarity how Apple versus Epic case, who is the winner in this case. If it's easy to surpass App Store fees of 30% because we're already aware that Google decreased it to 15% for subscriptions. And Apple is still using it 30% fee as always. So in order to optimize, I believe that more and more people will try to create different web ways, either one pagers or web funnels or full web products, and to use this subscription as the main one to surpass App Store fee. Two, it's basically in terms of user acquisition. Recently, a penny report was released and it states that the most downloaded app of 2021 was, surprise, surprise, TikTok. And this is a very interesting information because Facebook was not even mentioned there in the top five, if I'm not mistaken. And more people will try to switch to other than Facebook user acquisition sources. First of all, because they do not have enough young user base. And two, because the overall reputation of Facebook in terms of its popularity, reputation, and all the recent cases in the American courts, they do not have really good impact. And people become becoming more and more ad resistant, not only like banner resistant, but only typical ads resistant as well. Uh, creative ways or creative assets on TikTok, on Snapchat are different. Uh, the main slogan on TikTok ads is to make TikTok, not ads. And what I really like about TikTok is that creative is a king. You don't have to showcase your product. You have to show a beautiful story or to create something engaging. So I believe it will make sense in 2022 to dedicate more time and effort to building your creative strategies, not only on Facebook and Instagram, but also on other not Facebook networks. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, sum it up, I had predictions, web to app will be growing, user acquisition on non-Facebook will be growing too. This is Natalia Drost, greetings from Ukraine. I wish you a great new year and I hope that all your traffic will be always ROI positive. Cheers. Thank you, Natalia. And you made it clear that we do need to look at approaches other than the traditional ones. Our next guest, is Jerome Turnbull, VP of Growth at AppLovin. 
Jerome played a key role during the launch of Project Makeover, a game that topped the charts in just four days of launching with over 5 million downloads at that time. In this short note, Jerome talks about the opportunities that game developers can leverage in incentivizing their high value users. Here's my prediction for 2022. Some of this is already happening. Mobile developers are gonna invest more into alternative payment methods, and they're gonna incentivize their high value users to create accounts for this separate payment flow. It's gonna start with high LTV games, casino, MMO, strategy, but over time, users are gonna get trained to look for this and it's gonna be widely adopted in all games. And that additional margin is gonna be invested back into acquisition budgets for growth teams. Happy holidays. Thank you, Melissa, Natalia, and Jerome for your very valuable forecasts in the second edition of the Mobile Growth Crystal Ball series. If you missed the first episode featuring Danica Wilkinson, talking about the evolution of creators, Andy Carvel talking about subscription optimization, and John Kurtzier talking about the possibility of an iOS scandal. Definitely check this out on mobileuseracquisitionshow.com or wherever you get your podcast fix. Stay tuned for our final episode of the Mobile Growth Crystal Ball 2022 series coming soon later this week. And I hope you're having a great holiday season, a lead up to Christmas and a lead up to your new year. Thank you for tuning in. I'm looking forward to sharing the next episode with you very soon. For more tips, pointers, and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here or check out our blog, rocketshiphq.com slash blog.